Oh, we do got a chef. We can go in. Look at that. Night sun, activate. What's down here? Take a look. Oh, wow. Oh, geez. That goes way down there. Look at that. Look at that. Do you see it? See what's up there? Shoot. That could have been us. metal. I'm always afraid I'm going to come across and see like a body in there or something. Okay, somewhere out there is the green monster mine. And here's the green monster. Get out of my truck. This is a very well-made rock cairn. Must be a marker for something. If you look off in the distance, you can see my truck over there. All right, just for the record, I'm lost. Shit. at the Desert National Wildlife, um, no, we're not the Desert National Wildlife Refuge. We are south of Blue Diamond Road in Las Vegas. And right out here, just a ways, is small mines we're gonna go check out today. Now, the only issue I can see is you can see flood water ahead. There's been some serious flooding in the Las Vegas area. Desert National Wildlife Refuge is closed. A lot of the trails we usually go on are closed. I'm gonna head out there and see if I can make it out there to this old mine. If I do, we'll get some great video. Uh, but as you can see, flood water ahead. I'm not gonna go through anything dangerous. I am by myself. So if I can get through, there's not a huge mud pit, no big flooding, I'm gonna go for it. So without further ado, let's head on out there. I know a really cool mine we're gonna go check out today. Come on. Right, so I am airing down. Let's try to get to about 20 PSI. I don't know what we're gonna run into out there, but I do know that we're gonna have to take some air out of these tires here on highway pressures. Around 38 for highway, I'm gonna try to get down to about 25. So let's air down. I got the GoPro mount in front of the truck and then we're gonna get started. All right, all four tires, 24 PSI, GoPro is now recording. It's really sad you see trash like this. People just bring it out in the desert and dump it um, instead of taking it to a proper dump, but uh, that's just how it is sometimes. So let's go ahead and uh, get in the truck, head out there. You can see we're right off the highway. Where we're going is uh, several miles that way to an old mine. We'll see if we can get it without getting stuck. All right, 24 PSI on the money all the way around. Looks like we got some campers out there, which is fine. Um, the road should be more or less smooth like this the whole way out there. So we'll just uh, use caution, wear it down just in case and uh, hopefully there's no mud pits or flooded roads that I can see. Now, just because we're in the truck today doesn't mean we're not fully prepared. I've got my full load um, in the backpack, uh, food, water, survival, everything you could possibly think of I have with me just in case something happens, we gotta hike out of here. Probably just one obstacle we made it just fine you can see the trash dump here really sad people dump their trash right here like i said um but at any rate if the road doesn't get any worse than this we're fine that uh we're just kind of a little washed out area we had to go through and uh like i said it's putting a four-wheel drive with this high clearance vehicle really wasn't that big of a deal let's keep on going all right the road for the most part isn't too bad but there are some spots that are really really washed out the storms really did a job on the uh so-called roads or paths or trails out here in the desert so it is not outside the realm of possibility for us getting stuck um but i'm not going to try i'm going to try not to get myself in such a situation 
we may have to turn back if there's any obstacle that I don't feel we can get past. Some of these uh, washed out areas are really, really bad. So yeah, we'd have to, I had to put this in a four wheel drive. Uh, it's a high clearance vehicle, but I still scrape pretty bad in some areas. So I'm just gonna be careful and hopefully we can make it. Right, so this is what I just went through and this really made me freaking nervous. I'm tearing up my skid plate pretty bad. Um, it doesn't really look like much, but I can show you it is, especially up there, that big drop off. I may have to get the shovel out and, and um, smooth it out a little bit so I can get up it uh, because I, I bottomed out on that thing and my skid plate is really getting torn up. I mean, I know that's what it's for. All right, we're getting closer and uh, the road is passable. It's really, really terrible in some spots, but for the most part, the road is like this. Um, I'm just hoping we don't run any more bigger obstacles. Let's keep on going. All right, I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can hear me with the jet up in the background, but uh, we've made it. By my calculation, the mine should be uh, right up this little kind of valley there. I can't drive it. It's really too narrow and rough. I don't want to get into something that I can't get out of. So what we're going to do, we're all suited up. We're going to hike it. Uh, it shouldn't be very far. Let's go check it out. Uh, just kind of show you a little bit where we came from it looks rough it, it i was a little nervous coming down this with all these uh kind of ruts and everything i don't want to get in a situation and flip the truck over i am by myself out here um like i said we staged off the side of the road there and we're gonna hike into the mine all right gps apps can be a little misleading so that hill over there is where we just were turns out we didn't have to hike up that draw if we'd gone through a little more we would have seen this little spur uh which we took you can see some of the debris here from the mining area um, up here and it's a really kind of a tight road for a truck but we made it somehow so i've got the truck stage here a lot of debris from the mine the mine is just right up there so we're going to uh, hike to it shouldn't be much of a hike or pretty much there but you can see some material that was from the mine and uh it should be right up in this valley here now this one should have some shafts and some other debris around so we're going to go check it out All right, half the fun of exploring old mines and places is checking out the artifacts. Looks like it might be an old chair here. Um, other debris, that can might be kind of new. It's aluminum, I think the aluminum back in the day. I am being careful for snakes. It's, uh, it's late in the season, but it's still 80, 90 degree today. So yeah, definitely prime weather for snakes. And with all the recent rains we had, um, all their holes have been filled in so they may be out looking for new homes. Um, administrative note, the boots, Belleville, we're wearing them today. Um, they are a little heavier than the other boots we've been wearing, so I'm a little weary about that. When I first put them on this morning, they were very uncomfortable, very tight, uncomfortable, but wearing them, walking around, they proved to have broken in, if anything loosened up. So, uh, so far so good. They've got a really tough sole, which is great for these rocks, and uh, we'll see how they hold up. But uh, walking on them is kind of like walking on a carpet. It feels really nice. Um, I still like the Solomons better, but we'll give these Bellevilles a chance. So far so good. All right, let's look around. Yeah, down in this valley is where the mine is. There's a lot of debris here. We've got a lot of, a lot of uh, searching to do because you just never know what you're going to find out here. Now, this is all public land, and uh, as public land, BLM land, there's really not many restrictions out here. Uh, you could shoot, you can do whatever, and best of all, drones are permitted. So yes, I do have the drone with me today. And before we leave, we'll do a good drone recon. Uh, there's a lot of debris here. And there should be some mine shafts up there a little more, which we're going to go check out. So. Yeah, let's keep going. There's a small lizard running. That's the only reptile I run into today. I'm fine with it. I don't want to see snakes. Well, I don't mind seeing snakes. I just want to get don't want to get bit by one.
Look at all this debris. This stuff is, uh, you know, 50, 100 years old, probably more than that. You can tell just by how rusty it is. Looks like it might be in a refrigerator or something here. A lot of cans. Cans are your first indicator that uh, this is something probably closer to the uh, 1900s to 1930s. Let's keep going. It's warm today, about 88 degrees. I'm okay, I've got uh, plenty of water. Like I said, I do have full gear. We're pretty far out. Um, this mine is, I thought it was somewhat close to Las Vegas and it kind of is, but getting to it is very difficult. So I marked the mine, the general area, but I did not mark the shaft. So if I don't see anything, I'm gonna have to pull out the drone and do a quick recon, which we're gonna do anyway. Let's keep going. Another lizard right there. It's kind of a cool colored one. Ah, hiking in the desert. Like I said before, recent storms in Las Vegas really tore the area up. Roads at the Desert National Wildlife Refuge are still closed. Uh, they're washed out in some spots. I'm assuming impassable while the authorities repair them. So hopefully they'll get that done pretty quick and we can resume our hike up in the mountains. Well, so far I'm not seeing anything else. There's a pipe or something down there. Nope, there it is. Ah, oh, there's a mine, I see a structure up there. So there's the truck. Looking about a quarter mile away. I'm not out of shape, I just haven't been hiking for a while. I still do my uh, daily exercise routine. Morning uh, jogs between one and two miles. And the recovery is going very well for the sinus surgery I recently had. Probably another month or so. Chills back to normal, but uh, certainly significantly better than it was before. I always love coming to places like this where there's structures because all too often people tear these up, burn them down, spray paint, destroying. I don't know why humans have to be so destructive. So when you come across one that is still in, intact, it's really a real treat. All right, based on the pictures I've seen, top of this tailing pile, there's probably a shaft. I could pull out the drone and go check it out to make sure before going up there anyway, one way or another. So it's pointless to break the drone out right now. But once we check everything out, I'll, uh, I'll do a flyover so you can see what everything looks like. Some kind of an old boiler or tank or something, wooden debris, oil drums. If anything, these bell bills, and I tightened the heck out of them this morning. If anything, they loosened up, which probably isn't too bad. I'll just, uh, I could re-tighten them um, so they're tighter, but uh, I think they need to be broken in. And like I said, I can, I could, they're a little noticeably heavier than my Solomons. Uh, a little noticeably tougher in the soles. But uh, so far they're getting the job done. My feet are a little warm, that could be due to the socks, I don't know. I am wearing those new, um, um, what do you call it, darn tough socks, oil drums. And uh, if you saw the shorts where I showed you the unboxing for the boots and the socks as well, you'll know what I'm wearing. Uh, and I'll just say that I am not a spokesman or advocate for anyone, I have no sponsors. Um, I pay for my own gear. So the videos I made showing you the gear just for the benefit of showing you what I use. It's not a commercial. I'm not a, I'm not a paid spokesperson for these folks. Although if they want to send me something for free, I'm fine doing a blurb for them. But until then, yeah, I bought my own stuff. All right. Rough terrain, rough terrain. Looks like some ore right there, maybe. All right, so, looks like the remnants of an old ore chute.
the boots are tough, but I do feel a little almost like top heavy imbalanced or something. So maybe I do need to tighten them. I can kind of feel my foot moving a little bit. They're size 12s. I wear 12s, but maybe a little wider than they should be. So we'll make some adjustments and I think they'll work. This right here is probably the whole mine. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hike to the top of this hill. I know there's a shaft up there. I don't know if I can go inside it. I'm not going to do anything dangerous, but I could at least take a look and shine the camera in and go up there. Yeah, I see a dangerous uh, mine sign up there. So there's got to be a shaft we'll check out for sure. And then once I'm up that hill, I'll break out the drone. We'll do a fly over the area and then hike back and check out the debris field. Um, the day's not over. I told you there's a shortcut or coming back and that shortcut goes by another mine, which we're also going to check out. So keeping your eyes open for snakes or anything like that, we're going to begin our climb. See a lot of this green is ore. Now I don't generally pick up ore because some of it's poisonous, uh, depending on what they're mining. This one here, I believe is uh, gold, silver, and I forget what else. Um, not outside the realm of possibility to see a chunk of gold laying around, although generally my luck isn't that good. There's a bullet shell. Tank of some sort. Ow, it's hot sitting in the sun. And no, I'm not wearing my gloves. They're in my pockets. All right, Belleville, let's get us up this hill. Ugh. This, uh, Vibram Ibex soles. Hopefully we get us some good traction. Oh, we do got a shaft we can go in. Look at that. Look at that. All right, if it's not too unsafe, I'll go in. I do have the night sun with me, which will break out. Let's walk around a little bit, see what else is here. Usually when you see big pile of dirt like this, that means there's a shaft close by because people just dig a shaft and put the dirt right at the base of it. But I'm not seeing a shaft here, but that one we just saw, that could be what all this is for. All right. Okay. There's something on the hill over there. We'll check that out with the drone. That's what we got it for. All right, I come up here, I'll take out the, the night sun. Actually, I don't know how deep this goes in, so I may just, yeah. Let me just, uh, use our stream light first, and if it goes really deep and we can go in, we'll pull out the night sun. But you gotta be careful, these can sometimes, there are rattlesnakes in them. So I am watching everything. All right, yeah, this, uh, I'm gonna pull the night sun for this because this is a pretty decent sized shaft. So I'm gonna come out here, take off the backpack, and get the big flashlight. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go. Let's see what's in this bad boy carefully. Night sun, activate. Like some uh, railroad tracks run here. I'm watching everywhere. Oh wow, this one goes in a little bit. Now, it's notable that I don't go into mines that appear um, like they could collapse. This one looks like it's all rock, so as long as I'm careful, it should be okay. All right. There's a spur out there. Check that out in just a bit and see what's back there. I see some white, so there's another exit, which is great. I love mines with multiple exits. Carefully watching where we're going. I always whisper in mines because they make me nervous. There's a ladder. Looks like something collapsed over here. Yeah. It's real iffy going back there. It might just make a loop, so I'm not gonna do it. I am holding the night sun in my hand and the GoPro, and this thing gets hot. It is a very bright flashlight, and as such, it gets very hot. So it looks like another shaft going down here. Let's carefully walk over it, make sure this is secure. It does 
appear to be secure. I'll go straight down. Okay, just a minute. And carefully walk over this. Made it. All right, so it doesn't loop around. There's or or shoot green. It's probably or I guess. And up there, look at that. There's the exit to our end exit. So if we had to climb out, we could. But what's down here? Take a look. Oh wow. Oh geez, that goes way down there. Look at that. Look at that. Can you see it? That goes way the heck down there. A ladder going the whole way too. Sketchy as hell. If I had a rope, I'd do it, maybe. And other people with me, but man, that is sketchy as heck. Those of you saying going down there, look. That is a pit of no return, I'll tell you what. Uh-uh. Let's walk around and see what else we can find. All right, you know I say I don't go anywhere this if it's too sketchy. I have just got to see what's up here, see if it goes in. Uh, it doesn't look like anything. Yeah, just a little ends right there, prospect hole, and there's the exit. So we're gonna, I'm not gonna climb out this way, I'm gonna go back the way we came. And I had to put on the glove to hold the night sun, it was just getting too hot. All right, looking down, looks like there was some mud and moisture inside here. The, the shaft may have flooded during the recent rains. There's some spider webs. Big old mine spiders. All right. It's not a big shaft, but there's there's carts here that go to the ore chute, no doubt, and right down there, um, I'm not gonna get too close. That's, that's, that's a long ways down. Let's get out of here. All right, so not a huge mine. Um, old mines are dangerous, and I don't enter them unless I'm sure that they appear to be safe. And this one here looks like it's carved in rock. Um, so barring stepping any rattlers or anything, watch where we're going. This one is uh, minimal risk. I'm not gonna go in something that looks sketchy. So yeah, that uh, looks a pretty decent mine. I wonder how deep it goes, hard to say. Um, but like I said before, I'm going to go up on the hill, check out the shaft, and then once we're up there, see if there's any other shafts, and uh, see if we can do a drone recon around the area. <sighs> Let's climb. Actually, I'm going to put the night sun away real quick, because it's uh, taking up space in my pocket and not very comfortable. All right, night sun's put away, gear check. Let's keep going. Just gonna go up a little bit, probably past this structure um, and see what's up there. And then like I said, we'll do a quick drone flyover, head back and check out all that debris. See anything interesting out there? There might be another shaft up here. Take a look. All right, now, we are more than likely directly over the shaft we were just in, so I'm gonna be careful that we're not gonna fall in. What's over here? I don't know. <sighs> careful. All right. That's, I believe, the structure we were just in. But there may be some others over there, so let's, uh, even up there, it looks like there's some more too. So let's keep walking, see what else we can find. Well, these two upper ones, Maybe prospect pits, it looks like. Yeah. Well, that one might go up. It's hard to say. I don't know if it's worth going over there. This one goes down, and this one goes down. I'm 90% sure that's where we just were. And this one might go in. Well, we're here. We'll check it out, maybe. Why not? Carefully make our way over here so I don't fall into any of these holes. All right, yeah, this is probably where we just were. All right, this one goes in, and not very far. Might be a prospect, but I think it loops around to this one here. Might as well just check it out real quick, I guess, why not? Watching where we're stepping. Anything? Yeah. Really, it doesn't go very far. Yeah, not much here. 
All right, let's uh, set that structure up top. See what's up there. Maybe retighten the boots up there because I think as they're breaking in, they're loosening up. Okay. Watch where I'm stepping. This hundred year old wood is uh, very unstable. Save mine, stay out, stay alive. I know we came in the bottom entrance to this one, so we know where it goes. Let's walk around up here. Like I said, I think there's something up over there which will fly over at the drone pretty soon. Check it out. I'm gonna go right to the top up there because it looks like there might be another hole up there. So the whole, I'm assuming goes to the same mine we're just in. No, it doesn't. It's uh, it's full of water. Mosquito breeding ground probably. And this danger unsafe mine, how to know. All right. This flat area should be a good place to launch the drone. See what's up there. Oh, shoot. That could have been us. Lord only knows how deep that is. All right. Let me unpack and break out the drone. We'll check this place out. And keep in mind, I'm not going to be able to see very well on the cell phone, uh, cell phone screen, so you're going to see before I do. But I want to edit the video. I'll try to narrate a little bit over it so you can see. All right. Let's fly. All right, so you know drones have no sound, so I'm going to narrate a little bit. Uh, here's where I started. I just kind of flew over the mine a little bit, just kind of uh, see if there's anything I missed. You can see the wooden structure. Um, I did edit out some of the kind of what's called boring parts, I guess, and I flew over the entire valley, so you can kind of look down and see some of the uh, debris down there and everything. Uh, when you fly the drone, you really can't see much out of the little cell phone screen, so you've really got to... Um, kind of focus on what you're doing now here you could see me kind of walk down that's me in the upper upper part of the screen I'm walking down in this wooden structure trying to get some shade because I literally could not see anything on the cell phone screen so I came down to this structure kind of hiding in there trying to get some shade and then I saw the cell phone screen a little bit better but it's nowhere near as good as um, like on a high dis high definition computer monitor so I flew over to the mine um, you know, you could see down below some of the tunnels and everything. And uh, this wooden structure, I believe, was part of the ore chute, I guess. Uh, you could see me in there. It looks like I'm hiding, but uh, I'm actually flying the drone. I'm trying to focus on flying the drone. You'll see me wave here in just a minute. Yeah, there it is. Uh, but yeah, I'm focused on flying the drone. So at this point, what I'm doing is uh, it's kind of flying over the valley, and I'm going to go check out that structure over there that I saw. So the drone was really helpful because I could check it out, and I wouldn't have to... Um, I should hike over there. I didn't see the structure really clearly um, when I was flying over there, but I saw it clear enough to realize what it was. Do you see it over there? Kind of looks like a, a roof or a buried shack or something. Comment down below if you know what it is. Well, I'm going to tell you what it is anyway. Um, this is what I believe is a wildlife guzzler, and I've seen several of them before, and that's what it is. It's this uh, roof, so small animals and whatnot, rabbits, I guess, and everything can get under here. And there is somehow a water source under there. And that's what I believe this to be. Um, so if, if I'm wrong, which I don't, I don't believe I am, if I'm wrong, then uh, comment down below, of course. But these wildlife guzzlers are all over the state of Nevada. And they're typically, 
usually around springs or some sort of a water point. Like I said, they're just a point where animals can get water. And um, under here, I don't think big animals can get in there, but you know, maybe small mammals can probably get in there and uh, and get a drink. And that's what it is. Um, and I could have hiked over there, but it was a hot day. It was it was upper 90s, so uh, having a drone really helped uh, save me from hiking over there. Now you could see. Um, flying this direction here over that kind of trash pit when we first came in uh there's my truck across the valley right there you can see it there's that trash kind of trash pit um probably from the mine and then back over here over look at the valley of where the mine is right, so i want to gain a little bit of altitude and then come in and kind of get a good view over the valley and um you know if if i could see much better that shadow going over bed is overhead is more than likely an airplane taking off from las vegas airport um because you could hear him out there um, when I fly the drone, like I said, you can't really see the screen very well, which is unfortunate because sometimes when you look at these videos, like you're seeing right now, you can sometimes see um, features or things that, that are really cool to check out that are relatively close. You could see just above this mine, there look like there might be some prospect pits. Look at up in the hills, I didn't see anything. Um, but the mine itself, I think most of, of the mine is, is what we, we checked out. But having a drone, uh, being able to fly a drone out of here uh, was really nice. And you could really just get a nice aerial view here of the entire mine. So I apologize for some of the angles. I'm still learning uh, the controls of the drone, how to pilot it and get some of the optimal camera shots. Getting better each time I practice. But um, yeah, this is it. This is, uh, this is the mine. In just a second here, I'm going to descend, and what you're going to see is um, I'm just going to practice hovering in one of the shafts. I want to see how close I can get uh, without actually touching anything, so you'll see that in just a moment. Yeah, there's the uh, there's the entrance right there. There's uh, some debris and whatnot. Here we are coming down over some of these main shafts and everything. So that kind of gives you a good perspective of, um, of um, you know, how how these these mines are set up so yeah i flew in this area here and uh, i'll spin around here in just a moment and um you know kind of descend into one of the shafts really close just to see how far i can get i wanted to get as close as i could with the drone and um for these shots i'm not looking at the viewfinder i was actually watching the drone carefully um so i want to descend it like into this hole right here you're going to see me uh, the drone kind of descend into this hole i want to see how deep i can get it without actually touching anything and this was a little tricky with just the cell phone camera i probably would not uh with the cell phone screen i would not do this because you just can't see what's around you but i was watching the drone the whole time as it descended in there so i knew it was uh it was safe and the blades wouldn't touch anything but yeah that's about it you can see the uh the shadow of the drone right there and uh, we're coming in for a landing, and uh, that's about it. All right, how'd you like that, ladies and gentlemen? A little bit different from the air, isn't it? Let's talk perception versus reality. For those of you who said for years, oh, just get a drone, get a drone, it'll be so much better. Um, well, the truth is, the drone really isn't the end-all, be-all solution for one. Look how bright it is out here. I could barely see the phone screen. You saw me hiding behind in this little structure here. I had to get in the shade just to barely see the screen. So whatever you saw, I had a really hard time seeing. So as a recon tool, it can be helpful, but honestly, you can't see the screen. So maybe some VR goggles would have been better, but I'm not gonna lug all this junk out here with me on each hike. Uh, we did go over there and see that little structure across the way, which I believe is a wildlife guzzler. Probably a spring underneath it or something, but that's probably what it is. Um, you saw the mine. Um, I tested to see how close I can get the drone into that hole over there uh, without touching anything. I was not using the first person view of the phone. I was actually watching the drone to make sure that the blades didn't hit the side of the uh, that cave in there. But uh, that's about it. Hopefully saw a little bit different perspective. That's it for the Paradise Mine. We're out of here. Um, I don't know if there's anything else or could be, but um, I think this is the main shaft. So let's start making our way back. We'll check the debris field again uh, and see if there's anything interesting there. And then we're going to head home. But I told you there's a shortcut, and there is a shortcut on the way home th through the shortcut is uh, the Green Monster Mine. I don't think there's an actual green monster in there, but you never know. Uh, but we're gonna go check it out. I don't know if there's a shaft. I don't know much about this I just know uh, I saw a record of what's called the green monster mine. So that's what we're gonna go check out uh, The Belleville boots. I did uh, cinch them up really really tight um, Right there just before or just after we flew so there my foot's not sliding around as much as it was 
when I put them on this morning, I got them as tight as I could, but they're brand new boots and needed breaking in. So I did tighten them significantly and they feel better. My feet aren't moving as much. And some of you say, may say, oh, don't tighten it so much or you're gonna cut off your circulation. I tighten it almost to the point where I'm cutting off my circulation. Reason is these bad boys almost always loosen up as I walk. I mean, look at this rough terrain. Um, they just, uh, they loosen up and, uh, you know, so I tighten them as much as I can. These, uh, these soles so far are really good. Um, I'm liking them. They are a little thicker, more rugged than the Solomons uh, that we had, which I kind of wanted a rugged boot, as you can obviously see why. Look at the train we're hiking over. So yeah, they're perfectly suitable for what we have. But I will say, I still like the Solomons. Sorry about that. Uh, I still like the Solomons better. I do. They're lighter um, and just feel better. So. But these Bellevilles aren't bad, so far so good. Um, I did actually get uh, a set of Altama boots as well. I got a killer deal on those. So those are not my size, they're 11 and a half. I tried them on, they feel okay. So I'm gonna try those as well. Now, to get down. Should we come down this way? We're almost certain to slide. Should we go this way where we might slide? Or go this way through the rocks where it's easier, but there could be snakes. Uh, which way should we go? One, two, three. I can't decide. Let's do this. Let's come here and really test these Belleville boots. See how these Ibex outsoles are and see if they're gonna, how much traction they're gonna give us. Maybe this wasn't such a great idea. And no, I'm not gonna grab that steel cable, that uh, rust filled surely has tetanus steel cable but I'm gonna carefully slide down put in my new boots to the test Ugh. all right all right carefully watching for snakes Last thing I need is to get bit by a dug on rattlesnake. Okay, that's that. Made it. Yeah, the boots aren't bad so far. I maybe just need to be broken in. Like I said, those, those Solomons are awesome. I'm disappointed Solomon discontinued them. I could have got the uh, those uh, Solomon Forces GTX boots that I was looking at when we were talking about new boots, but uh, they just seem really big and bulky. And uh, they are, they're within 10 grams of weight of these, these Bellevilles, so, I don't know. I just went with the Bellevilles, I guess. But we'll see. Note to Solomon, if you work for Solomon Product Development and you're watching this video, the Solomon Forces boots that I had before, those I think Solomon Guardian. Why do you discontinue those? Those are awesome boots. You need something tough yet lightweight. Those uh, those other the big GTX boots, the Gore-Tex ones. Those are those are massive, but uh, we need something lightweight that can get us through here. I just saw something up there, and I realized it's the truck. I thought it was somebody else up there. I guess it's a good thing the truck's still there. We're just navigating down this wash. They call them a wash because. Um, torrential rainstorms it becomes everything just kind of washes down here like a raging river which no doubt September I think it was September 1st it was was a raging river but man some of the stuff we went over to get here was just really really rough and I'm glad we made it I'll tell you what fear of wrecking the truck of getting stuck all that stuff really helps you forget whatever Whatever things you may have going on in life. It's been a rough week, been a rough couple weeks. I mean, that's just life. It happens. And, you know, my life isn't nearly as rough as some others, but it uh, doesn't mean it's easy. It's rough for everyone. That's why I come out here, and that's why you're watching. And uh, I hope you enjoy these videos. I hope they're a good, uh, a good way for you to escape your regular lives. Some of you may have dull lives where you're shut in a home all the time. Some of you may have really rough lives where you're traveling or you're out all the time or you just just want to get away from people and, you know, shut off the lights, turn on the TV and 
go somewhere else. And I really hope these videos help bring you to that place. That's my intention here is to help you escape from reality like a drug. Except, except it's a video. But uh, my videos can be addicting. There's no lizard over there. Yeah, these videos can be addicting. You watch one, you want to know what happens. Because honestly, I plan the videos. I know where I'm going to go. I map it out. I put the points on guide GPS so they can be available offline. But uh, I never know what's going to happen out here. You know, I, I come out here, I just, I just never know. The plan is to get out here. What happens when I'm out here is anybody's guess. So you never know what's going to happen. And at this point you're watching, you don't know what's going to happen next. I don't know what's going to happen next. I'm just walking through the desert, checking these places out. Now we're coming to that debris field, so you never know. You may find some old artifact or something. You're not supposed to take it, and 99.9% .9 of everything out here is just garbage. But you never know. You may find something kind of cool. But I'm not like Kenny Beach and decorating my home with knickknacks I found in the desert. I'm really careful around these rocks. I know it's snake country here. Just a trash dump, an old trash dump. Now this area of uh, southern, just south of Las Vegas, a lot of wild horses out here, so I'm a little surprised I didn't see any. But you never know, we may see one. But every now and then you see wild horses out here. Look at all this metal. I'm always afraid I'm going to come across and see like a body in there or something. Could happen someday. A lot of bad people in this world. That's why we're always prepared. All right. I think it's just trash. I'm not sure. Definitely old stuff. Sometimes you got to really go off the beaten path to find the really cool stuff kind of like that uh, lost truck video that was that was deep in the mountains and uh i've been told there's another another truck out there somewhere but i've seen no evidence of it on google earth or when i was out there so you never know but you come out here in the desert find everything but the kitchen sink and sometimes you even do find the kitchen sink. All right, I don't see anything else. Do you? As always, if you see something I don't mention in the comments, um, it's not out of the question to come back out to a location if you see something significant. So I consider each and every one of you watching the videos as an active participant. Let's climb up here and the truck should be just, just up this hill. All right. Ugh. And it was just up the hill. Okay. Oh, man. Paradise mine conquered. Now. That roadway on yonder, going up the hill, that's where we came. I can make it back, but some of the obstacles we had to go over is really rough, and I'll probably have to pull out the shovel, the folding shovel I have, and dig them out. And I'd rather take the easy way and bid on a sure thing. So going this way, see where that telephone pole is way out? Just beyond there, around this kind of mountain range, should be the main, main dirt road that we could take and head all the way back to the main highway. And on the way is the, uh, well, there's a couple mines on the way, but the green monster mine is one that I've mapped out. So we'll head out there. And the interesting will break out the drone. But uh, I guess if you were to come out and collect all this stuff, it'd be pretty good to recycle. How much money you get for it. Some big old piece of metal like this, you might get some money, you never know. Anyway, our trusted steed is here grazing while I'm on the bushes. Let's uh, load her up and hit the road. All right, just about to load our trusted steed and I saw a, a glare up the road and 
all roads lead somewhere. We're going to the trash dump up here, so let's check it out. I don't know where this road leads, but uh, let's let's see what's over here. Old metal carts. Water heater. Briggs Beauty Glass. Don't even ask for a date on this. Come on. Stove. I need a, a date to see that's from the 1950s. In fact, this car right here, if you know what this is, comment below. Kudos to you for identifying it. But this is clearly from the 1950s as well. So it's a 50s area trash dump, mattresses, old chairs, beds. And that's it. I'm tempted to go up the road there, but I don't want to go too far and get my truck stuck. And yeah, I could take the drone, but as you know, it's tough to see with the drone. I kind of do want to go up there and see where it leads to, but nah, you never know. We'll take some pictures and get out of here. Oh, right, here's something. Carry all at Outlet Center. Serial number manufactured by Commercial Heater Company, Fort Worth, Texas. Old stove from the 1950s, or I'm guessing it's a stove. Another stove over there. That's about it. Oh man. It's a warm one today. I do want, like I said, I want to check out this road here, but uh, the thing about exploring is it's so addicting. You want to just see what's around the next corner. You don't stop. And it could very well turn out to be nothing. So I may come up a little ways just to see what's up here. I just don't want to get stuck where I can't turn around. So but anyway, let's get in the truck and head back. I may go up there a little bit, but if not, we'll just uh, continue on towards the... Uh, green monster mine and get out of here all right so i did take the road a little bit i just had to see what's up here and it leads to the back side of the mine we could have driven right to the damn thing but that's fine on the on the temperature today in the trucks at 110 it feels hot i'm sweating um but up here not much i see a stake in the ground and possibly a grill like somebody's camping I thought there was a stake over there. It's not. Yeah, there's a stake in the ground over here. And uh, maybe somebody had a, was cooking here. Looks like somebody may have camped here. And it would be a cool place to camp. All right. Let's head back out to the main road and um, get back to the, uh, let's see if we can go to the Green Monster Mine. All right, we're carefully navigating the side spur, almost back on the main road. Well, not the main road, but this, uh, the road we are on that'll lead to the main road, hopefully. So going right will lead us to where we came from. Going left was hopefully the shortcut. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's go left. All right, that hill we just went to made me really nervous. It was super steep. I'm going to go check it out. Yeah, it was nothing. I know all you off-road heroes say, yeah, as I do that in my sleep. Yeah, well, a lot of people can do it in your sleep. But those that can't need a toe strap. Looks like somebody left that there. It's just, uh, I just don't want to slide down is all, but it's, it's not as bad as it looked going up, so... All right, let's get out of here and keep moving. All right, so it turned. All right, so it turned out this hill that we were really nervous coming up. We've got to go back down it because where we're supposed to go is that little spur down there, not this main road. And that's what happens. If you don't carefully check the GPS. Now the road, uh, like I said, is steep, but not that steep. But still, I don't uh, take anything lightly, so I'm. I want to be really careful coming down this and not getting in a position where I'm sliding or um, top heavy or whatever or roll the truck somehow. I mean, it doesn't really look that bad in the video, but uh, you know, when you're driving, you're by yourself. It's, it's a little nerve wracking. But yeah, you can see right up there to the left, that's where we got to go. So we should have watched, took a look at the GPS a little closer 
we would have seen we didn't even have to go up this hill in the first place just one of those things now keep your fingers crossed that we can get through this area because i think it's got a feeling it may be a little rough and there's always the possibility we're gonna have to turn around and come back the same way we came if it's too rough um because right now i think it's about halfway between the two points let's take a look Uh, no, it's a little bit less going where we got to go. So anyway, 1 p.m. I haven't had lunch and I'm going to try to hold off until we get to the main road. We'll pick up something on the way home maybe. But uh, if I have to, I'll stop and eat. But yeah, you can see it's, uh, we're about halfway through the spur. So we got quite a ways to go over some rough terrain. It's, we may have to stop for lunch. And I got freeze dried food with us today if we have to. So let's keep going. All right, so far most of the road has been like this. No major obstacles and hopefully there won't be. It'll just really make me nervous. I don't want to get stuck this far out. As you can see, let me uh, let me zoom out on the GPS here and, and I'll just show you how far out we are. I don't think I can zoom out anymore, but uh, anyway, you can see Potosi Mountain, Green Monster Mine, Paradise Mine. Um, Las Vegas is is way up there. There's Mountain Springs, Blue Diamond, and yeah, there's, there's Las Vegas right there. So we're south of Las Vegas. We are way out there and um, Here's the road and here's the main road here. So if we can get to the green monster mine and where it's, it's not that far from the main road, hopefully there's a way to get out there and we'll, we should be okay because this main road I think is uh, is just fine to drive on. Of course, this down here is California, no man's land. We don't, we're not gonna go out there. And um, yeah, let's keep on going. Almost, almost a green monster road, not too bad. Um, you can see way off in the distance. I think that might be Pahrump and those mountains are probably California. So let's keep on going. We are almost there, getting closer. So close yet so far away. We may have hit an impassable obstacle. I'm gonna get out and check it out. Ugh. What do you think? Real iffy. I think I can do it. I'm gonna move this rock out of the way. I think I can do it. Okay, I just moved that rock out of the way by hand, which was no easy feat. It looks like it looks like this is actually the way people have been coming right here. So I have to back up and come here, drive over this effing bush, but I think I can do it. Yeah, let's give it a shot. Okay, somewhere out right there is the green monster mine. And here's the green monster. Get out of my truck. I don't know where he went, but as long as he's gone. All right, we are just crawling through here. Obstacles are like a puzzle. They make me nervous, unless I'm with someone who can help me get out if I get stuck. So let's hope we can continue getting through this yeah, because I don't want to go through that. That's all washed out. Let's keep going. Now that we've passed that obstacle, we've got some semblance of a road ahead of us, which will lead us to the Green Monster Mine. Hopefully there's something there and this isn't all in vain. Yeah, this is a rough day. Those who think, ah, you just drove out there. It's no big deal. It's not like a hike. Well, driving takes a certain degree of skill and you got to be alert all the time. You get in a situation you can't get out of, then you're going to be doing some hiking. And you got to be prepared for everything because this is the desert. And yeah, there's civilization out there, but how far do you think that is? 10, 15 miles? I don't want to hike it. In the heat, 95 degrees today. We're coming up on, I believe, some antelope. I heard of them out there. I don't know if you could see them running off in the distance. Look like antelope, some sort of uh, desert sheep, I guess. Probably antelope. I think we do have antelope out here. But anyways, I heard of them out there. You can see them looking back at us. You see the white butt stuff in the distance. Now we made it uh, this far of this spur. To get out, I believe we do have to backtrack a little bit. So far, nothing massive, just that one kind of obstacle we passed, but if we got down and we can get back up it. And I remember the turnoff to take that I believe leads us back to the main road. Hopefully, I think I see the green mine up there, some tailings or something maybe. 
it's a ways but not too far the road's rough but it's but it's doable yeah you see the tailing piles right up there. i don't know if you can see them up there but i can see the tailing piles which means there's more than likely a decent sized shaft so we'll see we made it to the green monster mine and it looks like we got somewhat of a monster hike to get there well not that bad but it's 97 degrees outside i got a big tailings pile there and a big tailings pile there i don't want to hike across the desert for nothing so fortunately we do have something we can use to get out there and check it out let's break out the drone all right so yes i am launching the drone for the back of a truck just want to see if i can do it and uh, no i haven't done this while moving and probably wouldn't it's just uh too dangerous anyway uh drones up and it's going to cover some terrain that i would have normally covered hiking out there because i didn't see a road but look at that what am i flying over that's a road yep there looks like a small road out there that um i did not see when i drove by kind of hard to see uh you miss things like that in the desert but yeah there it is leading out to a wash um the wash out there is really rough. It's like a, a riverbed. So driving through it, there could be some really big rocks and uh, it could be just generally challenging. Take a look over on the left side. You can see that kind of small orangish um, pile of dirt. That's a small tailings pile. There may be a small minor prospect pit out there. I didn't see this on the cell phone cam, uh, the cell phone screen. If I did, I would have flew over it. I was focused on these big tailing piles over here because any time you see this much dirt um, in the Nevada desert, chances are there's a huge shaft. and There is indeed a huge shaft out here somewhere. So I am flying over this carefully and I'm going to be searching for that shaft. So if I did see a shaft out here, then I would have made the hike. Um, you can look below, see those poles and stakes sticking down a lot of times. Uh, the old shafts are surrounded by poles and stakes because Nevada Department of Minerals will um, kind of put barbed wire around there to keep people out. Uh, it is very unsafe going inside old mines. Flying over some debris here, um, and again, I couldn't see it very well on the phone screen, so I just wanted to kind of get close, take a look. Um, you know, raising the gimbal up and down. Uh, take a look on the kind of the left side of the screen, that little rock retaining wall a little bit. Um, I didn't notice that either. Flying over here to the upper um, tailings pile, didn't see a, a shaft down there, so there had to be one up here, because uh, people would just dig out a shaft and just dump it, and that's what was happening here. You could see these stakes, uh, there's stakes surrounding something up there that's definitely a shaft up there, but as we get closer, you're going to see the issue with this shaft. Uh, it is filled in. It is filled in with concrete and foam, um, that kind of... Um, orange spot in the concrete is foam that they used to fill mine shafts so what happened is people came out here they used foam to fill the shaft at first and then they covered it in concrete how they got concrete way out here i don't know sometimes they're breaking up by helicopter sometimes they may drive it out there or may just be some buckets but uh yeah it's it's a feat getting it out there uh, probably not in the desert sun desert heat but um yeah that's that's what they do so this one here uh, like I said, evidently was filled in. I was checking the shadow there on those rocks to see if there may be a mine shaft over there. And then looking down, there's some debris. It looks like there may be a road. Um, coming over here into this little ravine that looked like it could have been a road, hard to say. Looking up over here, see if there's anything up here. This looks like kind of a wash or maybe a dry river stream where water was coming down during torrential downpour, but it's dry right now. Uh, just kind of spinning around. If you look off in the distance, you can see my truck over there. Um, way, way off over there. This is pretty much the ideal distance for a drone. Any more than this, I feel a little nervous about losing it. But um, right here, this is the ideal distance for, for flying the drone. And it saves you from having to walk this distance. Um, here I am just kind of zooming in on some debris. Seeing if there's a shaft over there. Now, you could see this really well, but keep in mind, I couldn't see it on the phone screen. So... For recon, the drone can be helpful, but not always, because uh, if you can't see what's on the phone screen, then you can't see what you're flying over. There's a piece of concrete over there somebody had laid long ago, it may have been a foundation for a building or something. But yeah, this is a tremendous amount of material, this tailings pile. So there, there's probably a big shaft out here at one time. There is another tailings pile that's off to the left. We're gonna fly over in just a moment that you'll see. Um, but I'm just, like I said, circling over here, looking for anything interesting. I'm not seeing anything, so I am focusing on the other tailings pile, so let's go ahead and fly over there. The drone seems like it's moving really slow, uh, but 
take a look at the ground, kind of where the bottom of the screen is, and imagine yourself running at that speed. The drone is actually moving really fast, but it seems slow. Um, there's a little tailings pile down there that we're flying over. Could have been a shaft there. Um, Anyway, the drone the drone is covering a lot of ground, as you can see, like I said, on the bottom of the screen. Imagine a, a person running that distance. But when you're at this altitude, it seemed like it's moving really slow. So probably, I don't know, 15, maybe 20 miles an hour. And uh, just kind of making our way to this other tailings pile. So in 95, 97 degree heat, this would have been a heck of a hike, especially in full gear from the truck, because the truck was a considerable distance. We would have to hike first to the first mine, then to this mine. And yes, I do see that road down there that there's a road leading to both of these mines. Didn't see that initially, and um, there's never a guarantee if the road is passable. So sometimes it's best just to get out the drone if, uh, if you're able to do so. That could be a shaft down there. You see those kind of poles sticking up. That was definitely something. Could have been the remains of an ore chute or a shaft or something. Um, I am getting better controlling the drone, so you can see the camera angles are just a little bit better than they were at first. It takes practice. Uh, there's definitely a skill. This up here was a vertical mine shaft. You can see the tailings pile, and I'll show you what I mean. Um, in just a moment, yeah, there we go. Coming up, um, there's the gimbal down. You can see that orange spot is foam used to fill the mine, and of course, this mine shaft, this vertical shaft, is completely filled in with concrete. Very disappointing. Not that I would have gone down there, but I, you know, I could have at least lowered the GoPro down there if it's wide enough, flown the drone down there just to take a look. But uh, these, these were some, looks like some pretty significant shafts, but they are now filled in. Off to the upper left corner of the screen, you could see the truck way out there. That's me sitting inside the truck, flying the drone, and uh, we're just kind of flying over this area. But uh, I mean, just imagine if you're walking out here, 100 degree heat. This, this is pretty significant hike. That, uh, the drone has saved us from doing so at this time uh, we're going to start moving toward the truck um, you can see the city way out there i believe that's i think that might be a prompt to that i'm not sure but that's a good uh i don't know 5 10 15 miles or so it's it's a long ways trust me it's a long ways but yeah um having a drone is nice because we don't have to uh physically hike this area Sometimes you do got to get out boots on the ground, but like I said, the drone can be kind of a nice tool. So, uh, yeah, we're going to come over here, bring it in for a landing, and then uh, we'll see what's next after that. We're just kind of bringing it down slowly for a landing. Now, see that road off to the right over there? I didn't actually see that when I was flying the drone. Um, you may have missed it already, but trust me. Off to the right, I did not see that road. That would have been a big, yeah, right there. That would have been a big shortcut. What we did is we backtracked, and you're going to see us backtrack. I wish I knew about that right there. I wish I knew about that road because that would have saved us so much time. Instead, we backtracked, and it was really rough, and you're going to see towards the end of the video why I wish I found a better shortcut. Um, but at any rate, we're uh, coming in for a landing here. Um, I thought about landing in the back of the truck, and I decided not to. So, yeah, that's about it. Carefully coming down. And trying to go for that uh, clearing right over there. Like I said, I, I, I want to try my skill at landing in the back of the truck, but I don't want to risk getting the blade on something. Taking off is one thing, but bringing it down is another. And that's it. Boom. Maybe we shouldn't ride off a drone as, an in, as not a valuable tool. Um, that's where we were, that first uh, tailings pile out there, and then that second one out there. I didn't see any structures or even any shafts, did you? I'm gonna have to look at the video when I get home. I didn't see anything, but um, in 95 degree heat, hiking from here way out there, and then out to there, and then back to here would have been a chore. Um, but this little guy did it, and no big deal. So thank you, Mr. Drone. That was a success. And uh, let's pack it up and get out of here. We got to backtrack a little bit the same way we came, but uh, I don't see too much of an issue doing it. And then hopefully we can find a way back to the main road. Looking over here a little more carefully, it looks like there could be a road out there. And I do see another prospect pit out there that we didn't see with the drone because we we're focusing on the big one. So you know what? I'm going to go down here a little bit with the truck and check it out and just see how far I can go. Um, because I did not see this road before we passed it. I was 
looking out there, but somehow didn't see it. So, I, something like this would be surprised there wasn't a road to it. So yeah, let's uh, let's load up the truck and go down there a little bit and see if we can get closer. But the drone flight was cool anyway, huh? All right, I'm coming down here a little way, but this is a bonus. If, I, if it gets too rough, I'm just gonna back out of here and head out like the way we had planned. But uh, we'll give it a shot. We'll see if we can can make it. It looks pretty rough. It's a very well-made rock cairn. It must be a marker for something. See how far we can go. We're a little bit, we're still a little ways out. All right, this isn't a road. This isn't a wash. This is hell. And at this point, I'm worried about damaging my truck. So this is what we'd have to come through is this crap. And this stuff is, yeah, I know you say, oh, you could do it. No, you know what? This is rough stuff and I'm risk damaging the truck. So I see a rock retaining wall up there. I see a bunch of tailing piles. I'm seeing a lot of stuff that I didn't see in the drone flight. So I'm gonna walk up here since we're close enough and check some of this stuff out. Uh, we should have just hiked out here. The drone was great, but uh, yeah, I don't wanna damage my truck on this and hit a rock. And like I said, we're alone. I had no cell signal. I'm not gonna risk it. I'm gonna put this away, get the uh, pack and start hiking. So I'm gonna come up just a little ways. See if I can see some of these features. This It's damn near 100 degrees outside, so I don't wanna hike too much. I don't want to take too much of a chance. I know you, a lot of you folks say you live vicariously through me. I don't want you to die vicariously through me. I feel okay, I'm drinking water and I've got the full camel back, but uh, I'm not gonna get too far from the truck. Here, if you can see that uh, kind of rock retaining wall there, I'm gonna try to get to it. Seeing bits and pieces of trash in this rock, in this wash. So there's gotta be something up here, some sign of civilization. And after this, I mean it. We're out of here. Find a way back to the main road. Now keep in mind, I haven't even had lunch yet. Big dinner last night, big breakfast. So I feel all right. So you see here, this would have been the road. And my vehicle had bigger tires and higher clearance. Maybe I could have made it. But it's tough. Seeing some artifacts out here. Oh my God. There's that rock retaining wall. There's a lot of moved material. There would have had to be a shaft out here at once. At one time. But I didn't see it with the drone. Oh. Okay. Here's the deal. I'm gonna go to the top of the tailings pile look around and make it back to the truck and that's it it's too hot we did a quick drone flight and didn't see anything i didn't see anything maybe you did but for those of you that said i could have made it maybe i could have but the truck was bottoming out right and left back there my suspension bottomed out i gouged my skid plate and uh, I'm just not gonna risk it being alone out here. I don't really have a cell signal either, I don't think. But uh, look around a little bit. Could have been a structure here at one time. All right. Now it's very clear these rocks and tailings. There's a big shaft around here somewhere. But it could have been filled in. A lot of times they dynamite the entrances for safety reasons people can't get in. And that could have been what happened.
Hard to say. But I said we'll come to the top of the tailings pile and that's what we'll do. Concrete or something over there. Okay. Retaining wall here and up there. I may give it a shot. I don't know. I see a rock retaining wall and some um, poles sticking up. Could indicate a shaft. But usually, something like this is near the entrance of a shaft. If they dig it out, they don't move the ore very far. Now you see the truck down there. See from here it looks no big deal. But I can assure you, you hit one rock or something the wrong way, mess up your suspension, bust a tie rod, or worse, that truck ain't going anywhere. And then you are a long ways out. It's a hell of a hike getting back. All right, I saw the top of the tennis pile and I did. But I want to see what up, what's up there. So we built that retaining wall up there for a reason. And there's tailings over the side of the rock, which means I can almost guarantee there's a shaft up there. And we may not have flown the drone up there. If I did, maybe I didn't see it. But I'm not going to go this uh, way here. I'm going to go this way over the rocks. All right. Rolling film for this. All right. See how good these Bellevilles stick to the rocks. Oh. Mm. Drink plenty of hot water. Uh. Anybody else would gag at hot water. But when you're in the middle of the desert, in damn near 100 degree heat, wanting a pack, climbing a hill like this. The water is, uh, is appreciated. It's exceptionally hot today. Now keep in mind, we're almost there. If I start getting dizzy, I'm gonna stop, rest, and then we'll make my way back. But I feel like I make it. We're just a few feet away. And there's no shaft up here or nothing. I'll be a little miffed. Maybe a lot miffed. Okay. Okay. There's a shaft up here. There is. But somebody Filled the bitch in with concrete. How the hell do they get concrete way out here? Concrete mining foam. This for the shaft. The green monster mine. It's not worth coming out. Okay, okay, we did it. The green monster mine. Drone didn't show a shaft. I'm not seeing anything here that we didn't see in the drone flight. I'm not going to the other one out there. I'm gonna slowly make my way back to the truck and then inch our way out of here and go down here, all the way down there, all the way out there, somewhere out there, 
is the main road that goes all the way out there back to Las Vegas. Let's do it. Did make a short up there, which you've probably seen already. And we're navigating on these rocks in our new Belleville boots that are working. Um, I would rate these maybe 80 to 90% of what my uh, Solomons were, but it's only the first day. And they're just barely getting broken in. As far as weight goes, I'm not seeing a significant difference. I've got strong legs. Uh, my foot does seem to move around a little bit more in these than did with the Solomons. But uh, they're getting the job done, just not as well. So like you saw up there, there appears there was a shaft, but it's filled in with concrete. I don't know how they got concrete all the way up there, but they did. And that's what happens a lot of times in the Nevada Department of Mines comes out and fills these shafts so people like me don't go in there and get stuck. But unfortunately, people like you don't get to see what's inside. Every now and then you get lucky to find some shafts out there that are not filled in, but this particular one does appear to be filled in. It's upsetting because with this much tailings pile, Probably a significant mine out there. All right. Right now, we are just coming downhill to this wash. To get back to the truck, slowly inch our way back to the road, inch our way back to the main road, inch our way back to the pavement, and uh, get out of here. I'm not timing the walking as I usually do, and I should have, but I didn't think I'd be doing any significant hiking today. But on the clock, it's 2.30 p.m. I haven't had lunch, but I feel fine. Um, if I was doing a significant hike, I'd probably stop and eat, but right now it's hot outside, and uh, just trying to get back to the truck, tripping on these old rusty cans. My feet are moving around a lot in these Belleville boots. Man, I don't know if they're gonna work out for me. I do have a backup pair. I got a pair of Altamas that I got dirt cheap, like I said before, but uh, yeah, these Bellevilles so far, I am, uh, not overly impressed. God help our troops to get these issued. But yeah, my foot's just moving around a lot. So, you know, it could be the socks, could be uh, the terrain, who knows. It is my first time with these new darn tough socks. That's their brand is darn tough. So they might be moving around a little bit more, but man, every time my ankle twists, I can feel my foot kind of move in these boots. And, uh, yeah, I just don't know if they're gonna work out. 200 bucks for boots. Here's that kind of, wait a minute. Got a retaining wall. It's a foundation, there was a house here. Look at that. All right, there's a the truck up yonder. Let's get back to it and inch our way out of this horrible wash without breaking anything. Jesus. All right, we made it off that wash onto the main spur. That was a terrible idea. I did going down that rough road. Why'd you talk me into it? Oh, beautiful. Okay, fork in the road. Looks like that road might go to that other mine. I ain't falling for that again. That's what the drone's for. Hopefully you saw some good stuff in the drone footage. I could barely see sitting in the truck. I ain't driving out there. All right, let's inch your way back and hopefully don't encounter any significant obstacles getting out of here. Okay, so we have to backtrack a bit, and we did. So this is the point that I believe will lead us back to the main road, hopefully. All right, just for the record, I'm lost. Um, heading towards California, which may be right up there a little bit. Uh, but I'm trying to get to this main road right there, you can see. And once we do, I think we can take a right and follow that all the way back to where we came from. Uh, but yeah, we're not going the same place we have planned. It happens you don't do a good route recon beforehand. But we're going towards civilization. I'm pretty sure there's a road up there, so we'll make it out eventually. Plenty of gas. Um, all systems are go right now. So we'll just uh, keep going and hopefully get out of here soon enough. All right, so we come across the main road here, and uh, that way, I believe, is the way to Las Vegas. I'm gonna double check the map. It's not on this map here. This is uh, Onyx Off-Road. Let's check Gaia. See what Gaia says, and Gaia doesn't even say anything. Okay, there it is. 
zoom in a little. Yeah, guys, there's nothing. But I'm gonna take an educated guess and go this way. All right, it's not pavement, but we're moving. Uh, fairly flat ground, a little gravel, and uh, still running 25 psi, which is perfect. And according to my calculation, this will get us back towards the main road leading to Las Vegas. We got a ways to go, so we'll just uh, barrel down here till we get to pavement. And California is that way, which we're not going to go. So let's keep going. Shit! Jesus God, please don't let anything been damaged. All right, I hit a bump and got some air back there, and you can see some of my truck got messed up. Um, not a major deal. See, the light needs to be realigned. Skid plates messed up. Uh, the bumper's probably fine, did its job. Uh, molding, all of this, I think it's probably gonna be an easy fix, but uh, it's gonna take a little bit of work. It looks like plastics, I think they can fix it. Uh, it's just got to be popped back into place more than likely. I don't see anything broken. So um, Yeah, I don't think the suspension took a hit or anything not that I could see underneath Skid plate will probably be need to be replaced But um, other than that, I think everything is functional pretty much. But yeah, we got some air on that last bump. It was pretty bad I was at least 15 miles from the nearest paved road when this happened, so for the entire way back, I was 100% focused on getting home safely, and I did not film any more that day. After checking the dash cam video and the damage, I will say that nothing short of divine intervention could have prevented further damage. I easily could have broken an axle, had the airbags deploy, or damaged the truck beyond reasonable repair. Sure, somebody would have eventually been along, but a tow from that far out would have been very costly. At the time of this video, the damage appears somewhat minor, so hopefully nothing really serious happened. The truck seemed to drive fine afterwards, so I'll find out more once my shop does a full inspection. There's always a risk when we go out, so any expedition I return home safely from, I am thankful for. I truly appreciate the support of each and every one of you. I am delighted you enjoyed the videos. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow so that others may be watching as well. That's it for this video. Until the next time, see you on the next adventure. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the videos, please subscribe to the channel and you'll be notified when I post a new one. All of my videos are unscripted as they happen. I can't promise they'll be exciting, but I can promise they'll be 100% real. My name is Steve from Las Vegas and these are my adventures.